Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to another edition of Fridays with Sandy. We have a great candidate, Samuel, in Nigeria. He's a civil engineer. He wants to go and get an MBA. Uh, he's worked as a civil engineer for a major company as well as a consulting firm. And his real heart seems to be in creating a tech startup. So his uh, range of schools, uh, wide range, Michigan, Maryland, Harvard, Washington, University in St. Louis, MIT Sloan in Toronto, Rotman. Sandy, what do you think? Uh, Samuel, I think you've got a lot going for you. You're a very attractive candidate. A candidate, you. you're, you're a Nigerian citizen. Uh, you're from Africa. That's a real a plus in the business school's eyes. Business schools are interested in making connections with Africa, getting students from there, placing students there. So that you've got that going for you. You went to... Uh, University of Ibadan, which is in Nigeria. I, I yeah. think your grades there were six out of seven. What is that like? A, what is the that? Trust, trust, trust class. Yeah. First class. First class. Honor. First class. Okay, so you've got a first class, and then your GRE scores translate into something like a 660, 670 GMAT. So that's, you know, that's acceptable. For some of these schools, uh, I, and actually, I if you if you look at the test taking average in Nigeria, it's way up there, which is another consideration. Yikers! Um, yeah, John, how do you know that information? I actually published that <laughs> on uh, wow. Poets and Quants. Uh, uh, average scores uh, by country. Yeah, okay. it's wow. way up. Uh, for okay, Nigeria. so Samuel. Let, 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 we're going to let you introduce yourself. Could you tell us what you're doing now and what you want to do in terms okay. of your career? So what are you doing now? Who are you working for and what kind of company is that and what do you do? Um, I work for OVRUP, that's um, a 70 year old multinational consultant firm with presence in over um, 35 countries and has 92 offices across boards. Um, and um, there I work as a civil engineer. Um, one of the Okay, let me interrupt. Does it, do, do you know anyone from your civil engineering cohort that applies to business school or that just doesn't happen? Um, at my operations in Nigeria, no. Um, okay, no. good. And you've got a first class degree You've done great work there. Now tell us from this background, okay, what what your goals are. Okay, so um, taking that in, in, in context alone, it's not going to paint a picture of what I really want to do. Before that, um, I launched a startup, which is Podloop. And the main reason why I'm touring this career line in transportation engineering is because I lost my dad to traffic congestion. And ever since then, I've been obsessed about solving the problem of traffic congestion. And because um, I also helped my mom hawk her goods growing up. So most times when I look for solutions, I look for entrepreneurial solutions. And um, so I was- okay. I, let, me, I, let me interrupt. John, how would you advise him to, pre to present this transition from a, a civil engineering technical background, which business schools would be very attracted to, okay, to this startup called Podlobe, to what his goals are. How would you, how would you suggest he state that? Well, basically, he's going to leverage uh, his uh, civil engineering skills to come up with the, the ideal solution uh, to traffic congestion. Right. Yeah. You see, that's that's good. You see that it's just it's not a total switch. Yeah. In civil engineering skills. He wants to leverage that to create Samuel, uh, uh, if I'm not if I'm correct here, an app, an app, right? An application. Yeah. Yep. That's the foundation of the business. Yeah. So you've got to be able to bang that out uh, when you're talking to these schools. OK. OK. I mean, the other, the other powerful aspect of this, obviously, obviously, is the personal story. Having lost his father uh, due to tremendous stress based on 
a long commute where he had to leave four o'clock in the morning his home and didn't come home until late at night uh that ties in really nicely and makes for a very compelling story about your goal right so you've got the 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 father piece the civil engineering piece and then the application piece right. uh, are there any apps like this samuel or anything close um the only thing close to it is that of mbnb but they just attract tourists to where they can stay. But this is for commuters and walkers on a daily basis to homes that they can, you know, they can rest. But the Airbnb is the only one I'm pretty yeah, much aware yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, what, what um, w w when you were, you've been interviewed by a couple of schools so far, did, did yeah. they ask you what a plan B was if this didn't work out? Yes, they did. In fact, um, with the school, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention the name, but the first school I interviewed with um, really asked me what exactly was my plan B. And I mentioned the fact that I'd like to work with um, a unicorn or a large tech startup that runs a similar business model. And I mentioned Lyft, Uber, and, and Airbnb. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's, that's a great answer. You say, well, you know, I, 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 might, I might actually start with that. I'd say, you know, this is my long-term plan, but I want to get an MBA, and then I want to get some big firm experience at a place like Uber or Airbnb, which are doing similar, you know, vaguely similar things. So I think that would be a great answer for you. Because uh, okay. your goal is, is a little... Um, it could be a little, it could be news to people. So you have to ex not only explain your goal, but you have to explain the whole industry. Uh, okay. And that can be hard. Okay. So it's just, I, you might think about saying, yeah, well, I'd like to go to your business school and then get a job at Uber and even name the job, okay? Find a job at Uber that hires MBAs. Uh, yeah, founders, and, strategic consulting and heads of operation. Yeah. Right. And that, that helps a lot because after all, those firms that you mentioned uh, have tech platforms that essentially uh, do what you want to do in a different market. So you yes. would learn a tremendous amount if you got on the right team at a Lyft, Uber, Airbnb, and those jobs are accessible to MBAs. Uh, and that might be really helpful for you as a first step. The other thing about those jobs is that they pay money. And of course, an MBA, even if you get a scholarship, is costly. So it may be to your benefit to get a job first. Yeah, that's, that's a good get point. Get some money, pay down debt, and then and start your company on the side. Good. Okay. Anyway, I think you've got a lot going for you. I think, uh, you're, you're, okay. tell us where you're thinking of uh, going, uh, Samuel. Um, school, business school. My, business like school. My, I think my first choice is obviously um, um, HBS, mm -hmm. um, not just because of the MBA, but also the fact that I might be able to interact with um, top um, Africans and we might be able to do stops together, like the League of Nigerian thing I mentioned. And then my second choice would be MIT. And um, yeah, and then Ross and um, well, pretty much. Uh, but then a factor really, because I'm looking to fund my, um, my MBA program was scholarships. Uh, it's scholarship opportunities or availability could really swing my, my decision. Uh -huh. Aha, so, good, okay. Uh, yeah, well, that, that's what scholarships do. Okay, I think your odds at uh, HBS are, if you can present yourself your strong story really clearly. I, I think your odds at HBS are like uh, 35, 40%. You got a lot going for you. Uh, and you've done a lot and a lot of this is just great. <clears throat> I, think, I think you should get into schools like Rotman, Maryland and Michigan, those things, schools that you said you were interested in. Uh, boy, I think your odds there should be like 40, 50%. Uh, yeah, I, I think you really should be in in line at those places. Uh, and at MIT, uh, I, I think MIT is, 
they're always looking for underrepresented minorities. Uh, they may have some questions as to whether you could do the quanti work there, but I don't think so. So I think your chances at MIT are good too. I think you're a powerful applicant and uh, I'm real curious to see how this works out. Uh, I, would say, I would suggest you apply to Oxford in England. And I'll tell you why, because a dean there, more than any dean of any business school in the world, is uh, heavily invested in recruiting students from Africa. And uh, um, dean, like that? from dean day dean? one, this dean, who is from Harvard Business School and was a professor there, uh, has made uh, African recruitment of students a major priority for the school. And that means scholarship <laughs> help. That means you have an instant community of, um, of people to network with. I, I, and, and the beauty about the European schools, incidentally, particularly Oxford, is that they have later, uh, later deadlines. So you would have plenty of time to spin out an application there and see what happens. Check it wow. out, Oxford. On that piece Thank of you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. OK, Samuel. Well, you got a lot of homework, but you're, you're an impressive guy. I, let me know how this works out. Yeah, Thank good luck you, to you. Oh, we Thank really, you, uh, really hope this works out. And you know, I got to just put this in perspective. If Sandy says you have a 35 to 40 percent chance of getting into Harvard, that's very high. <laughs> you should feel very good about that. Okay. I know. I've seen quite a number of okay. um, yes. percentages given, and it's not a high. And again, it's all about execution and 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 crisp answers <laughs> and uh, and rehearsal. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Samuel. You're, you're, what you'd have to focus on at Harvard is not blowing the interview. That is something that the Harvard interview yeah. destroys a lot of good people. And it's, you know, and it can, it, it, it's like being born, man. A lot can go wrong right away. <laughs> How do I do a that? A lot of catastrophic things can happen in five minutes. <laughs> How do I not blow the interview up? You've got to make your answers. Uh, you've got to get the answers to the 10 most common questions. And I don't mean trick questions like, you know, what kind of cheese would you be? I mean questions like, <laughs> tell me what your goals are or explain what you do at your current business. You've got to be able to really bop that out. Yeah, very quickly and, 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 um, and clearly, you know, yeah. not a lot of words. If anyway, you, If you have access to a mock interview, you might think about it. Yeah, it's it's worth uh, doing a rehearsal with uh, okay. uh, a few people. Thank All right. You. Well, Samuel, good luck to you. Sandy, thanks Thank again. You very much. This is John Berman, Pods and Quants. Uh, wishing all of you out there a uh, successful journey to business school. Thanks for watching. <laughs>